Welcome back to another episode of the Abundant Life Show. I'm Charles Todd, the janitor, and this is the president of the world, Angela Todd. <laughs> He's learning. He's He is on the money. I figured if we just got the marriage stuff out of the way, we wouldn't have to have a marriage counseling session. It seems like we do every episode. So It's coming. If you've seen any of the other episodes, you will know at some point there will be a marital counseling session. And unfortunately, somewhere plugged in to this episode. I'm the one that gets his ass roasted on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always you bringing it Ladies, up. Ladies, <laughs> you got to get it out at some point. So just stay in it. <laughs> so I love you, babe. Liz, we already got on it already. I even, got, I even said the title we've been talking about. I'm already <laughs> Here we go. Roasted. All right. What are we talking about? We are talking about how to raise a champion. Woohoo. Hercules, Hercules. I like this one. And it's um, really about two, one of the things, and we've talked about this in the past, um, giving advice to parents, but it's taking like strong behavioral issues, issues right. even. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, sometimes you think of issues as being something bad, like they got an issue, you know? Right. And all these kids now, it's like, they're hyperactive and let's put them on this drug and let's try to dope them up so that they'll be a zombie or whatever. And it's like, and that's actually the thing that's driving this child to be that champion. Right. And so for us, you know, our daughter's professional athlete, so we rose a, raised a sports champion. But this isn't about just raising athletes, because I think sometimes we think about champion. This is a champion, I don't care if they In play. Life. If they play the right. flute, they play the piano, if they're an accountant or whatever it is, whatever it is that your child that has that gift or that calling or that drive to do. It's about making them a champion in that specific area of their life. Right. So what do we do as parents to encourage them and to help them to become that? Because it just doesn't happen by osmosis as we learned. Right. And what do you do with the strong-willed child, the difficult child? How do you mold that behavior into something that will be productive and not yeah. harmful? Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of parents that struggle with behavioral issues with kids that just need help. Who needs help? The kids or the parents? Oh, uh, both. <laughs> I mean, we were just at a restaurant yesterday and, you know, the kid was pissed off because mom didn't give him the number that he wanted, but that was not their number. And she said no. So the child was screaming and you looked at me like. I was ready to smack him. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my kid, we'd have been out in the parking lot getting a butt whooping. No, but you can't, you cannot spank your child these days. Well, you cannot. I can. Even indicate. No, I you would. Can, in your mind you can, but you cannot act out because now they'll take the child and they'll put it into a separate home and that child can report you and now you don't even have rights as parents. Homie don't play if that. If you want to get on that subject. No. Yeah, but that's circa 1980, 890. You know, how do you deal with that today? Yeah. Well, and that wasn't the number because then it was, I didn't want this, then I don't like this table, and you know, on and on and on. It's like the guy that flips you off because you pulled out a little too far or whatever. It's like, it wasn't because you pulled out a little too far. It's because the dude has issues on something, you know? So, right. so the, you know, the whole point is like the kid just had an issue with his behavior. So that just needed to be molded. He, he needed discipline. This is a whole different subject. <laughs> well, we're we're going to talk a little bit about this towards the end because it is something I want right. to talk about. Um, but I want to start off more about some of the necessary steps. So I've come up with, I tried to make this as streamlined, as effective for listeners today. I will always take you down a rabbit hole <laughs> as much as you try to streamline no, but I, it. I came up with <laughs> 10 points okay. on how to raise a champ. So we're going to talk about all 10 points. We're going to get it into our whole show here today okay because i wanted to be effective to get because you could go in a lot more we're actually we're besides our children's books that we've written money mike and the gangs which have our four book series on money is easy saving is easy giving is easy and the loan shark how to stay out of debt our children's series of how to teach parents or teachers on how to teach kids financial ways to be successful we're also writing a book called how to raise a champion and the things that we have done as far as writing these books or anything that we've done with our, our ministry, our podcast has all come from our life experiences and starting from having success as you would have it in the world 
and making money in our businesses and the nightclub business and whatever, and then losing everything and being bankrupt and having no place to live, being basically homeless, having no car, having no bank account, having no anything, and then doing it God's way, which we've talked about in another episode recently about, you know, how do you birth millions? So that's part of what we do at The Abundant Life is helping people in every area of their life on how to prosper physically, spiritually, financially, and mentally in those things. So with that being said, that we're, we're putting these things all together from biblical perspective, from knowledge perspective of, of things that we've listened to from other people who have helped to mentor and to give us advice, and then also from an experience perspective as well too. Because I think as a, as a teacher, one of the most important things that you can have is some experience. And that's one thing that I found in college that was probably one of my biggest pet peeves that I had these guys who are professors teaching me about a subject from a book that they know the book inside and out and have absolutely no experience whatsoever. When I have somebody trying to teach me how to be an entrepreneur and how to start a business and has never started a business, it makes it a little hard for me to swallow. When I have a person, when I, was, I went to school to be a dietitian, when I am in the three and the 400 level classes of being a dietitian and I'm exercising and taking supplements and doing these things and diet and having some success in those areas and I have a, a teacher who is 100 pounds overweight telling me that those things aren't necessary, it makes it hard to really believe and understand that and to, I guess, um, have respect for they're teaching because if they don't respect themselves enough to take care of what they're teaching in their own book, then how does that even make sense? It's like having a personal trainer who's a hundred pounds overweight. How does that even make sense? It doesn't. So my point is I said all that to say that we are giving this knowledge. We are giving these recommendations from a lot of personal experience, from being able to not have the upbringing from a childhood on how to be successful in the area of your finances to then when we got those tools from the teachings and the mentors that we had and then implemented into our daughter's life starting at a very young age around six and seven years old and have seen now the success that we've had, we are simply sharing those things. Where now she is a seven-figure professional athlete, a right, it's star in her own right, living her dream, traveling the world and living her best life. My point is... How did we get there? <laughs> we just ain't throwing out some hogwash here yeah. that we Googled. We're not telling you something we don't know a thing about. We, we know a thing or two about how to raise a difficult child. Dug in the salt mines <laughs> for years with the grace of God and to get to where we got. So it's like, we're just sharing it. it. I have, when you read how to read, how to raise a champion, the very first page, when you flip open the books, has one word and it just says, Pray. That good takes, start. that's the very first step. That's pretty good because I, I don't have that on my list. Yeah, <laughs> You have to, especially what's going on in the world right now, because, you know, like I was going off on a rant that you want to take me to the end to is what rights do you have as a parent these days to raise your children respectfully and putting them on a, um, on a path to prosperity and mm -hmm. not letting the world influence them yeah. with propaganda of one side or the other on leading them to a path that doesn't even line up with their gender. Well, and I think that that is part of the enemy's plan of removing that, removing the nuclear family, one, creating an opportunity for a child to not even have a life through abortion, and then, then once they are, then yeah, let's confuse them on their identity so that they can't reproduce. So the whole thing is about, it's evil. It's about death. It's about removing life. It's about removing the abundant life. It's the exact opposite. So you have to keep that in perspective and not let yourself as a parent be swayed by those things and think, gosh, if I do that, what are people going to say? Or if I do that, what's going to happen? You got to do it. You just need to be smart about to how be... to do it. The Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. You still got to use that rod. And I'm not saying you go get a steel rod and beat him over the head or whatever. You got to use wisdom in order to how you do that. I think we used to use like a rolled up newspaper with tape on it and wooden spoons, some other stuff. I got raised with a belt. 
My dad whooped my ass with the belt. You will go to jail today for using a belt on your child. But as I've said before in the past too, at, by the age six, if my dad just touched his belt, or if he said, do you want the belt? I was like a soldier at attention. I didn't right. want nothing to do with the belt. And the belt was my deterrent to act appropriately. Right. So I was conditioned to know that you mess up, you go and get the belt, boy. Right. So guess what? I was a pretty good kid after six or so <laughs> once I got that. And I think our dog was the same way. I don't think well, I ever... Well, then what happened when you got like in your 20s and 30s? Well, that's a whole different subject. Yeah. Right? Talking... All right. We're talking about kids now. <laughs> not talking about me and my 20s. We're talking about... And that's when I think you then as a parent, you just have to pray. <laughs> you know? Because you can't use the rod anymore. They're 20. You probably live in a different state than they do. So it's not even going to work. So right. pray. I even text my mom this morning. Hey, we're doing a podcast today. Pray. She's like, pray now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so like now it comes, it's from a good perspective, right. like relying on your parent to pray for your success and not, oh dear Jesus, please get this kid out of this rut, <laughs> you know, right. praying for that success. So that's a good way to start. I like that. You have the power to see your child's future. Yeah. Absolutely. Just like you do for a friend, just like you do for, you've been given the power to help someone, I mean... Look at how many people that we've helped or healed in their health and their finances and their lives and their relationships. And even when they thought we were giving them a word and they thought we were absolutely crazy, but we saw a good future for them. Yeah. We saw prosperity for them. We saw yeah. laid hands, prayed, and it came to pass. And they would come to you thinking, I thought you were nuts, totally out of your <laughs> mind, which is true on a Some lot of, of occasions. Some of those years later. I think when you're nuts and out of your mind, you're just not um, molded to the world's way of doing yeah, things. You're believing God for a supernatural thing, and that takes sometimes being a little it's nutty. that it's that spoken word to put that thing into motion. Because the Bible talks about in Proverbs that death and life are in the power of your tongue. So you can either speak death over somebody, or you can speak life. That's how powerful your words are. And then James talks about that your tongue is like the rudder of the boat. Mm -hmm. So when you're the rudder will steer that boat to that desired destination, whether you're, if you're, if you're, say your desired island is success, then you'll have to use that rudder to steer that boat there. If you don't, if you just take off and you don't use the butter, the rudder, the boat's gonna just go aimlessly. So it's the same with our mouth. Our mouth can either take us aimlessly or it can take us to that desired direction. And the point that I'm trying to make with that is that speaking over our children, the things that we say to our children can determine the outcome. Just like speaking the word over somebody, you get a prophetic word and one of the words of the guy told me that was just went through divorce and all these other things that his marriage is going to be restored, his ministry is going to be restored, all these things are going to be restored when he thought at this point there's no possible way that that could ever happen after just what happened. Right. I still spoke it into existence and it came to pass years later. Right. So my point is this, is that speaking those things over your children in a positive aspect and using words that you want to direct them to that desired destination in their life is so important versus saying, you ain't no good. You always get D's. I don't know why you can't ever do this. Are you going to be stupid your whole life? I mean, where are you taking that? That's that, that's that rudder taking that boat to a to death island. Right. <laughs> it ain't taking it to prosperity, abundant life right. island. So that is so important on what you're saying to your children because you're planting seeds in them of greatness or defeat. And some people don't even realize what's coming out of their mouth. Just like some people don't realize, like you were saying, of write down your routine diet or, or diet, your routine. Yeah. Even yeah. if you write down your diet, people don't realize what they're actually eating in a day. Right. If you could actually record what someone is saying in a day, because you are, some people are in denial of what is even coming out of their own mouth yeah. because they, for, I mean, it's like a, an illusion. Well, of, it's, or it's like we're talking about earlier about society. It's so socially acceptable. I'm dying for that piece of cake. Does anybody ever think about, are you, are you really going to die for it? We heard a guy today, my back is killing, killing me. me. Yeah. My <laughs> back elevator. is killing me. I've, oh, how's your golf game? Yeah. My back is killing me. Yeah, so, oh, my golf game's well, great. guess what? You know? <laughs> At some point, your back's going to kill you. <laughs> People think, well, no, that's does, that's not really true. That's not you how it happens. You can always trace it back to a word spoken over your body. How What's many people talk negatively about their body? And that, that's a process. Remember when we first started like getting teaching, teachings on words and the importance of your words? And then so what we did is that 
we basically called each other out. <laughs> you know, when I you, still when do. you stay so well, yeah, it's still struggle <laughs> because you're sometimes your flesh or your mind wants to like <laughs> you know, and so your spirit's got to get a hold of that and to get it. But when we, I remember when we first were working on this, it's like ah 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 ah. You're like oh gosh yes 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 <laughs> you know change our words so you go back and say it the right way. My back's killing me. Oh me. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes I'm healed. My back is healthy and whole. Because what are you doing? You're speaking that into existence. The Bible also says to call those things that be not as though they are. So you may be not healthy, but call yourself healthy. So the same way, your kid may be not doing good in school, but start encouraging him on the things that he is doing good on. Right. I don't care if he got four Fs and one B. Hey, well, man, that B, that's good. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Especially when they are off track, because like when Paris would get off track or she was doing something the opposite of being a champion. Reminding just remember, them. Re You're a champion. Start acting like one. You're a champion. Yeah. Go out there and start playing like one. You're a champion. Yeah. Go out there and start being that champion. It's just like you're. if you're righteous, go out and we'll start acting righteous. Yeah. You know, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So start acting that way. That's what that just reminded, that's what Paul said to I think to the Corinthians. Remember, was it the Corinthians when they were having like sex in the church with prostitutes and all this crazy stuff was going on? Remember that? Yes, and I what, don't. It, well, I don't remember it because I wasn't there. But and, yeah, the word. But yeah. I, I, mean, I think that he was there and he like but, taught them, oh, and then I he may left. Have been like in my 20s. And then he came back and he's like, "Do you not remember that you are the righteousness of God in Christ?" He didn't say, oh my gosh, you guys are creating fornication in the church. What the heck is going on here? Right. He, he reminded them of who they were. Who they were. So that's what you said, you know, reminding them, even, you know, remember with Paris, like you can get mentally, like if you're losing, you can get into a tailspin, man, you can sink your ship real quick. Really quick. You know, and so oh my, I can't hit any ball in. Like, what are you saying? Right. Every ball I'm hitting today is going out. Or do you I don't know hear what's going someone on. Someone yeah, say, so. "I suck, I suck, <laughs> yeah. I suck." Well, guess what? You You're suck. suck today. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we've had a lot of experience with that in watching tennis and seeing tennis and seeing that type of stuff. And you know, you can, like you said, you can see people just sinking their own ship with their mouth. So, I don't want to talk too much on this, but don't sink your kid's ship with your own mouth. Yeah. So speak good things over them and then also teach them how to use their mouth in a positive way as well too. The kids are also sponges. So whatever the parent is speaking to the other parent and whatever the parent is saying about themselves is what the child is absorbing. And they will take on those words and those traits and then begin to speak and mimic. They're just a little parrot. apple. Yeah, parrot, exactly. <laughs> it's, I used to always say, how mad can you get? Because it's like staring into a mirror. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to have an argument with Paris, we are literally, I'm yelling at myself. <laughs> so how do you correct that? Yeah. You know, you have to watch what's going on in the home and how you speak to your family. Good but, stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get to number one since we haven't got to oh, that. Here we let's go. get this <laughs> ball rolling Rabbit here. hole 00.1. Okay. So number one is discovering the gift. Discovering the gift. So with us, it was like, you know, we started Paris out in all these things that we wanted to do. Like, first thing I want to do is karate, teach discipline and honor and respect. And she hated karate and didn't want to go to karate. She got kicked like, out of karate. Like, you got to respect <laughs> Sabu Nim. She said, I don't like Sabu Nim. <laughs> like, she hated Sabu Nim and she hated karate. And well, she, she was she so, everything. so pissed we, putting on that gi. She was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but I was into that karate, and I put my gi on, so I thought it was good. And yeah, because that was your gig, yeah. right? That was your gig. That's my whole point. So then from there we went to, because you were a cheerleader, we went to cheerleading. We went to cheerleading. And cheerleading you. didn't work, so let's go to jazz But she dance. was the cutest cheerleader out there. She was the littlest one, but then she was like, what am I doing? She hated it. She hated cheerleading. We, we tried it every spinoff of cheerleading, jazz and tap and every other, and none of it stuck. None of it stuck. And... So my whole point is with that is that we were trying all these things that we liked and that we did as kids or whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we got to the point where I was like, are we creating a quitter? Oh, we like, put her in piano, which neither of us played, but we did have a musical fan. I have a musical family. Put her in piano. She got kicked out of piano. Not only did she get kicked out of piano, the piano teacher grabbed her by the neck and dropped her off at her front door and said she's unteachable, unteachable. and I quit. <laughs> that was a, from a teacher. A teacher <laughs> saying, your kid's unteachable. Here you go. You can have this little you know, brat it's back. Like, what do you do? <laughs> how, do you, how do you get through that? 
You know, so how do you then discover the gift? So what did we do? Well, the, the point that I was trying to make with that is that, you know, then I was like, are we creating a quitter? Like, what the heck are we doing? Are we like bad parents? It's like, it's just part of the journey, you know, and trying to discover because sometimes you don't automatically know what their gift is. Sometimes you can see a kid's like, okay, the kid likes to be on a calculator with numbers all the time. He's going to be an accountant or a mathematician or whatever. You can see it. Sometimes you can't. It's almost like, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you have to discover it. It's almost like a treasure hunt and trying to find that. So you may have to do those things. And for us, you know, thinking about right now, at least we were creating routine in our life to go out and to discover. Yeah, or to, Try exer- to exercise and to be doing something, right. to not just be sitting on the couch playing video games or whatever it was. So we we're creating something good. But, you know, it wasn't until she said at five for her birthday, I want a tennis racket that we finally discovered what it was. And sometimes we'll take some time. And we had nothing to do with that. We had no tennis background. We Zero. didn't even play tennis. We didn't even know what tennis was. I didn't even know how to buy a tennis racket. How I did call she my even uncle. find out about tennis? I have no idea. It had to be just a positive here from God. And so I called my uncle and said, hey, this kid wants a tennis racket. I have no idea where to start. And he's like, that's okay. I'll send you one. So he sent us one. And we have that same little racket in her trophy, tro- trophy collage that you built for her with all of her 80-some trophy tags on the bottom. It's inside that glass picture case or whatever. Because that was like the the start. There was the inception of this whole career that she now has. Right. So. um, And that was her telling us. Well, she wanted. We didn't force something on our child. She told us what she was interested in, and we allowed her to explore that space. And that's really important to ask your children what they're interested in and allow them to tell you and not to be closed off with what they say to you because... They're like, what do you want to do? If that you for? don't agree with it, or oh. if we didn't know, we called our family to find out what do we do. Yeah. We don't know anything about this. Can you help us? And he sent us yeah. her first Junior Wilson tennis racket. And one of the things I saw in tennis through national juniors and some of that is that there's ex pro tennis players or ex college tennis players who are parents that have their kids in tennis. And the kids didn't really seem to be that interested in tennis, but parents were really interested in it. So it was more the, the parents' dream than the kids' dream. And so then they weren't quite as successful as probably the parents wanted them to be. So once again, not making it your dream. And it's okay, like if the kids like doesn't really want to do, doesn't have any ideas and you want to put them in something that because you know it, that's okay, you know, okay. starting somewhere. So I'm not saying, hey, don't put them in something you did. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, it's if they're process. miserable and they're unhappy yeah, and they they're not like producing it, and yeah. it's a chore i mean obviously it's not the right try right. something else right I don't feel bad about trying something else i was gonna say something else on uh kids with in sports um anyway go on it'll come to me so number two is supporting the dream right. so okay now your kids found it how do you support it you know and i think it takes the parents not only have to get behind it from a, a mental, from an encouragement thing, which we've already talked about, but also financially. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to take, I mean, regardless of what they're doing, it's going to take probably some money to put them in some type of, whether it's piano lessons or this lessons or this well, league or that league. There's or also whatever. after school programs. There's um, parks and recreation groups or big, big girls and boy club, the YMCA, there are other organizations that do have uh, like inner city sports and youth that you can go and explore. True. Good point. So in case maybe you're limited in there of your finances of to go and explore those things. So it's going to take somebody's resources though. Let me rephrase it. Right. <laughs> it's going to take some resources to help to launch this kid's dreams, to support that dream. We're talking about supporting right. the dream. It's going to take resources to support your kid's dream. So if you don't have the necessary financial resources yourself to to able to dedicate to that, then find these other programs that can help you to do that. Right. And what we have found is that when you focus on the dream, the provision comes. Mm -hmm. The opportunities come. It opens up once you allow your child to blossom because the focus isn't on yourself or what you can't do. And I think a lot of parents can get tripped up with, 
it's going to cost this much money. It's too out of my reach. We can't. Yeah. Do, there's no way. They're not smart enough to go to school and to get a, a grant or a you know a scholarship to do what they need to do within their sport. Well, guess what? If you focus on the gift of your child and they have a talent or a gift, it will blossom. It will open. Yeah, I just heard a testimony of this kid the other day that his dream was academics and he wanted to go to Stanford and his family did not have the resources. They did not have the ability to do any of that type of stuff, let alone even send him to community college. And the long story short, the testimony is that he ended up getting a full ride to Stanford and got his dream by doing exactly what you wanted. And it didn't come until like, I think one of the last weeks before getting admission and everything else. So, you know, it was totally a God thing. So, um, makes me think of Matthew six says, do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Don't worry about all this stuff. Right. Focus on my righteousness, right. my goodness. And then what all these things, things will, will come, will come. Well, so th things are going to chase you down right. when you're focusing on him and trusting in him. You don't have to be like, I don't have the resource. I don't have this. Hey, I got God because God's my source for all things. Right. So he can, he can be not only your source to pay your bills, but he can be the source to have the resources to put your child's dream into motion. And that's where I, I'm gathering back my thought. Here's my thought on is when parents will s put their child in something that they're not interested in because they want to be supported by their child. I mean, we're talking about a really bad 30 for 30 example, <laughs> right? How many people, when we were in tennis saying, oh, when she makes it and she's a star, she'll, she'll give you some money. It's like, what? The money that she makes is her money, and we're going to help her continue to excel to make more money in the area of her finances and in her life. We're here to uplift our child. We're not here to drain finances and resources <laughs> from our children. We are here to leave a legacy for our children's children. And still that's helping to support, other. even when you have a child that's making seven figures. You're still, you're still I supporting. Like, I was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> you're still on our cell phone plan. It's like... <laughs> Don't you think you should get your own plan? She's like, no, no, don't, Daddy. Please don't do that. I was like, what are you talking about? It's like a hundred bucks. Is this the principal? No, please don't take me off there. I was just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> it was like this. There's just the principal to feel like I'm still helping too, right. but hers the same right. thing. It's like she don't care about the hundred bucks. I don't care about the hundred bucks. And like, suddenly okay. you're Daddy. Yeah, daddy, like, hey, daddy, I, I don't, still, I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> like you're off the tit. She's like, no, please, daddy, don't do it. <laughs> There's still that umbilical connection. Um, but yeah, we are designed to enable and to encourage and uplift and to help our children and to help them help other people, not draining resources from your family or your children, because that's just not right. Another one that just came to mind to me, um, we watched this movie recently is the Williams sisters. Mm -hmm. They're raised in Compton. Like, you know, being from Southern California, it's like one of the most poverty stricken areas. You mean Rancho Dominguez? In LA County, <laughs> Rancho Dominguez. <laughs> That's the Compton's new name. Okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they were able to get everything they needed to do it because people were interested and thought that they were so good. So people can even can see, you can see the, talent. the gifting, the right. talents in that, and other people may will come. And it's just like, you know, when the Bible talks about giving, it shall be given, you press down, shake and get it, run over, overflowing, shall men give to your bosom. It's like, so men will come to assist you with those things that you are in need of that you're not worrying about. So you can get assistance, right. you know, you never know. And that's why I try to pick, but don't try to figure out how God's gonna bless you. Because everything, every time you think you got it figured out, it happens a different way. Right. <laughs> he doesn't think the same way. The Bible says that his ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. Right. So don't even try to figure it out. Just believe he's going to help you out. And see the end. So if your child is sideways with their academics right now, see them with a diploma graduating if that's their course. See them getting honorary awards. We used to always tell our daughter that she was a valedictorian. <laughs> and she did not go to elementary school. <laughs> she was privately tutored, got her GED, which took her three times, but she got it. Didn't really go to normal school, but every day we would tell her, you're a valedictorian, and she operates that way. 
And you would think by her poise and her demeanor, but sometimes when something comes out of her mouth, you just go, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. <laughs> like, there's that eighth, eighth grade education. <laughs> I'm just going to tell her, honey, Speaking. you're a valedictorian. You just <laughs> continue on with yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> so number three, I'm going to keep this rolling here. Quitting is not an option. So once you start, once you're now supporting this dream and you're moving down, it's like you have to take quitting out of the equation, no matter what happens. How many times did Paris quit? Number of times. How do you overcome that when a child wants to quit something that you put so much time and effort into because it was their dream? What do you do? Go back to number one. Pray. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> like, All those fails go back to number one. And why does it have to be like, okay, I did everything I could possibly do. I did steps one through 10 that Angela and Charles said, and then I did steps 99 through 109 too. <laughs> and I'm going to pray. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to pray first. That's how we started, right? right? Pray first. So yeah, just pray and then continue to encourage, you know, it's, what you don't want to do is, oh, I put so much time and so much resources and so much helping you out and you quit. Oh, you know, it's easy to do that, it's right? It's so easy. But we didn't ever do that. You got to let them sink their own ship the whole time we you're just, praying. And what you said to keep seeing them, I just always kept seeing. And I, I, what I would go back to a lot of times through those times when she was like 16 or 17 or whenever we were going through that, you know. I didn't get to be a kid and I want to go experience these things as, an, as a normal kid. And I used to always, people used to always tell you, you're not, you're not letting her be a normal kid. It's like, I'm not raising a normal adult. <laughs> if I want to raise a normal adult, I would keep, keep her in private school and let her do all those things and she would come out and she'd be normal and she would right. do those things. That's not her dream. I'm supporting her dream. So I have to take her to a different place in order to do that. Right. So once you get to that point where it's in that I had to go back to when a lady was at our house who prophesied over that, that walked into her bedroom and said, oh my gosh, you have a champion. You're raising a champion. Remember? Mm -hmm. Remember that? And so when we were in those times when it's looked like, what, what happened? What are we doing? I would go back and I would think about that. Think about, you have a champion. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And continually reinforce you're a champion. You're yeah. a champion. And every day, and I don't care what it looks like, you just keep saying it over and over and over and over and see them. See them winning. See them getting trophies. See them uh, excelling in their life. See them helping other people. See them having children that are also champions. I mean, you got to look beyond just the natural. You have to look into the supernatural. And what is going to bring you the most joy is what your children blossom in. I mean, that's the most joy for us is seeing her actually live her dream. Yeah. She's living her dream life. And yeah, it was a sacrifice for us in a lot of different ways, especially in, in your finances. But she had all the help, all the resources. We never lacked. Yeah. She always prospered and and excelled in what she was doing. That's a whole blessing in and of itself is like having your child prosper. Yeah, you know, Matthew, that is an absolute blessing. Matthew seven eleven says, if we be an evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more does our Father in heaven want to give good things to those who believe? So it's like it's okay. whatever we want for our kids, God wants even more right. for them. So, you know, one thing we've talked about is that you know, when we have great success in our business, it's like, okay, yeah, cool, high five, it's whatever. But when we've been able to bless people in our ministry, it's totally it's like different. When we leave those meetings after taking care of some kids' college for their entire, paying off their entire debt, whatever it was, it's like you're in tears because that feeling of what you've done is so overwhelming that it super exceeds any great business deal. It's a totally different. It's a window of heaven. Totally different level. So my, my point is this, is that to see your kid prosper and be successful That's is, another is, window is of heaven. even more than yourself being successful. Right. And that doesn't mean that you can't be successful too. And you have your kid, like you don't have to sacrifice your own success for your kid to have it. God wants you both to have it. Right. But when you get to be able to see that, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Just keep seeing it. What's next? Routine. Here we go. <laughs> well, we've talked about routine a number of times. How much of a routine has Paris been in since she's been 
in diapers, literally. Yeah, her whole life. I mean, from the time that she started playing tennis at six, her whole life has been a complete routine to the point now that, you know, the autopilot, the discipline that it takes, that's where I was going to go. The discipline that it takes to be where she's at now, not just the training, the competing, but the, you know, talking with the agent, talk with the sponsors, dealing with the business, dealing with the contract, all type of stuff, everything that is laid out in the day. It's like you said, it's, it's an autopilot type thing. Right. It's like working, like we were talking about Chip Wilson, you know, getting up and biking two hours and then working until lunch and then going and running a, eight, a 10K at lunchtime and then working until nine o'clock and then going and swimming for an hour and a half and then eating, going to bed and doing the whole thing all over again. It's like for her, it's that same thing. It's like that going on court for two or three hours, going to the gym for an hour, going to the physio for an hour, going back and on the court again for another two to four hours, going back and getting some therapy and doing IV and doing that. It's just like, you just do it. Right. It's just a routine. And so that, that consistency, that, that discipline forms that routine that I think that anybody that you see in life that's gonna be successful has some type of disciplinary routine in their life. Okay, so now I want to talk about the opposition that comes when you're on the track. Is that on your list? <laughs> we could be going down another rabbit hole, but that's where I like to go. This is on the list. Okay, so when you're on a path of... It's called dealing with setbacks and drama. Dealing with setbacks and drama. Oh, we've had so many of those, especially in junior tennis. So when you're on the track, I want you to... How do you deal with the opposition and the drama? Because for Paris, she had a lot of haters. She was cute, she was talented, and people did not like that. She had a goal that she was going after. And even parents were like, oh, you think that your daughter's gonna go pro? Well, you got another thing coming. And you know, there's just a lot of haters. People wanna come against you. People would come against Paris. We had kids forge our name and pull her out of tournaments. We had uh, dads, because there was questionable line calls, jump up and you guys start fighting and get kicked out of a, a match. Not me. Oh yeah, not you. Not you at all. So how do you overcome, <laughs> when you're in your lane, trying to stay in your lane, that happening? What would be your advice? How do you overcome it happening or how do you deal with it when it happens? Both. Pray. <laughs> when you're in the heat one. of the moment, you are not praying. You one. are cussing just as much as the other dad. <laughs> Especially when someone else wants to try to come against your daughter. I mean, it's a fire that rises up in you. If you're going to come against my child, I'm going to take you out right now. So ask me the question again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got pissed off. <laughs> what was your your response? Was you jumped up? You guys went outside. Yeah, we didn't actually fight. Yeah, but still, like, how can you overcome that feeling in the moment of you just want to wring somebody's neck, but you just can't? I mean, that takes a lot of poise. It takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of, okay, got to be the bigger person. But in the heat of the moment, sometimes it's tough to just nip that. Yeah, I guess it's like... Just like getting cut off or, Yeah, that's you what know? I was going to say. I was going to use that analogy. You know, you, like, maybe pull out a little too far to try to get out to, into the intersection or whatever, and somebody comes by and they honk at you and flip you off because they think you're too far out there or whatever. It's like, it's not you that's causing this issue in that person's life. They've already, they got other stuff going on. You're just kind of a, another deterrent that's stirring the pot a little bit more for them maybe, so it's not really a problem. So knowing that whatever's coming from the other person, I mean, you always quote the scripture, what, is, what causes the fights and quarrels among you is it not the... Desires that burn within you. If you can think that, that it almost lets you have compassion for somebody instead of getting mad. So for me, it's like if somebody's really pissed off and trying to do something about it, if I say, okay, this dude just got some issues. So what about um, if they park too close to your car? Yeah, I did pretty good about that last <laughs> weekend. <laughs> if they block you in on even entering into did, the driver's side, I did pretty good in your Bentley. Well, then the Bentley has a Lambo. Oh, it was the Lambo too, but I'm talking about the Bentley in the parking garage when someone blocked oh, yeah, that off one too. the door. What is with the people? <laughs> it's like here's a pet peeve. Why okay, do you, here are why some pet do you peeves. Park 
this close to somebody's car when I park on the far outside of the parking lot. You park as far as way as you can, and then someone parks right next to you, and you can't even open your door to get into your car. Don't do that. Okay, so what's the question again now? I'm really like... <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. We're having compassion for them. Yeah. Did you have compassion for that person that parked too close to your Bentley door? That's just stupid. <laughs> Here we go. You can't forgive. We're in marital counseling. You can't forgive stupid. <laughs> okay. You can't forgive stupid. Here we go. It's a work in progress. We are still a work in progress. All right, so we're getting anywhere. So with, back the, to what, number what, one. What, just pray. Well, okay. Just pray for the people. Why don't you give the advice? Why don't I ask you, so what do you do, Angela? That's a good question. In this Ask situation, me. Situation. Yeah. When somebody parks too close to your car. I get in on the other side and I pray for that person. <laughs> okay. And I don't care what someone else is doing because it's their problem, not mine. Okay, great. Okay, here we go. Next. <laughs> <laughs> that was not where I thought we were going to go with how to solve these issues. <laughs> I guess the point is that stuff's going to happen right. on this journey with it. So try to deal with it as gracefully and as loving as you can. Do how's, the how's loving that? thing. That's the right thing. Try to, try to love. It's, it's like, not always easy, but that's where you have to be the bigger person is always do the loving thing. That takes some work. It takes a lot of work. Because everybody's got their different trigger points, I think, that... Well, it's tough makes... love. <laughs> 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 right. Pray, love, and be graceful. And be graceful. Okay. <laughs> All right, next... <laughs> Okay, so we're off the thing. So uh, relationships and networking. It's such a big one because without those, how can another door open? Yes, yeah, so I, I think about, you know, building a business. Uh -huh. What do you do? You go to trade, trade shows or you go right. to conventions and you go to these things. What are you doing? You're networking. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to do those things. And what do those come through? They come through relationships. So, you know, whatever it is, let's say your kid's a pianist, you know, is there a piano show coming to town that you can go and you can view and you can talk to other pianists and you can associate and meet somebody or, you know, I don't know what, right. you, what you do if you're a pianist. But, you know, the point I guess is, is that, you know, seeing what things are evolved around your kid's talent, its gift or whatever the activity is that they're pursuing to be a champion and seeing where there's other events or people who are doing things within those and get involved. Right. Well, and another thing that just triggered, um, could be another rabbit hole, is if the kid is passionate about something, but they fail at it initially, give them time to find their way. So we were watching Cary Grant, that um, new series that's on BritBox. And he went up on stage. He had a passion to act because he was in a another show and he was trying to make his way and acting and he goes after he goes on stage he totally bombs his audition and the the judges were like you have no talent get out of here like what do you do when someone tells you and you have a passion to do something you have no talent and get out of here that's that's really tough pill to swallow especially when he feels led to do something and then George Burns comes on right after him a young George Burns in his 20s with his little cigar and, you know, they run into each other later and he's like, well, I didn't get the gig either. Well, did you get the gig? No, I didn't get the gig either. But the point was they both didn't get the gig, but they were both two huge stars in Hollywood. So how do you overcome if your child has a passion for something and they fail at it and then they fail again and they fail again or someone tells you you have no talent? Like, what's your recommendation? Well, we're back to no quitting. Again. Right. So, no quitting. Same thing. You're speaking encouraging words or whatever. It's like right. quitting is not an option. Right. So. Or if hey. your child is in a sport and their team fails or they, you know, lose every match or, but they're, but they're out there practicing every day. You've got to see where the passion is at. Cause if they're putting effort into it and they're putting more time into it, they are driven to their destination. So my advice to parents would be see it happening for the child. Don't discourage them and saying, well, maybe they do suck. Maybe this isn't their path, but if they're continuing to put time and their resources and their passion towards it, see it happening for them because it will happen faster for them, is what I'm saying. Don't give up. Okay. So back to networking. Back to networking. <laughs>
keep on networking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. So Don't give up networking. Okay, so then I'm going to I'm going to spin this a little different then based on what you just said because you're going back to not quitting, not right. giving up. So getting around and this is something that we used to tell Paris is that if you hang around buzzards you're going to be a That's buzzard a if you get around eagles I just said this That's to her one. last week in a text and she's mm -hmm. like come on really she's like that's not what I'm doing it, no, that wasn't really what I was saying I was trying to use the analogy or the principle of changing her way of thinking because right. of the way that I thought she was going I didn't really think she was doing that mm -hmm which I think worked. My point is, we're talking about networking. Get around people who are have your same interest and have your same mindset yes. and have that same goal and drive. Like if you're if you're playing tennis, don't get around the guys that I don't even care if I win. I don't, you know, I'm just doing this for just I just, my mom doesn't want to deal with me today. She just wants to drop me off for an hour. I don't really want to be at home either. <laughs> right. You're going to be around the other guys that are championship minded. So networking around other people. Hang around the eagles if you want to soar above right. everybody else. Find where the pros are training and go and hang out there for a little bit. But, you know. We did that when she was age seven. I took her to what was IMG now, to Bolitary Academy in Brandington, and they wouldn't even let us in. Oh, she can't get in until she's eight. So I asked for favor said, okay, you can bring her. If you come and you stay on the property, it's fine. I'll do it. And I'll even do one of your half day clinics and spend some more money and be there to be able to have her to, have her to do that. And so that was our, kind of our thing is like, okay, you want to be a champion? Do you know what it takes to be a champion? Let's, let's go, go Let's go yeah. see. Let's go do that. So with them, I think it started at like seven in the morning until noon, court training, weight training, all the stuff lunch then back to playing match play and everything then they had like mental and all stuff it was full day like seven to five and so with her like i did half day i was whooped out in the florida heat because we're from socal and after dinner she said you want to go hit i was like what do you mean you want to go hit you've been hitting all day you've been <laughs> doing stuff all day no i want to go hit some more take me to go hit and that was when i knew she got it and that was the whole goal of going down there right. does this kid have the here, mindset, what the it passion, takes to do right. this. There's a kid going, I don't want to do this. This is not going to work. Right. And she had it. She had it. And so, that's what you have to nurture. You have to nurture the passion. You know, so important. So, and that's that's the thing too. I think, um, even allowing your kids to be tested a little bit. Right. You know. Yeah. Not, oh, that's not, another thing. Not you know, sheltering them <laughs> so much. Not sheltering your children. Which I think is going on a lot in society today. It's day, totally going on. It's like. You know, walk to school, <laughs> go uphill in the snow. There needs to be a Do little bit. Do some work. There needs to be, be a little bit more of that. Right. So just, I just real quick, I want to get down that whole thing. That's a whole other show on its <laughs> Here own. Here we go. Another rabbit hole. <laughs> Is test your kid. Push them. Don't be afraid to. Like, Test their limits. Yeah. See and, what they're and, capable and of. Encourage them to do right. that and put them in situations to even stretch them. Right. And not be like I remember this one kid used to play tennis, and I used to, I used to tease Paris like, is his mom gonna bring a baby bottle to the back of the fence and put a baby bottle through him while he's playing? She used to go like stand and talk to him and stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm thinking you're supposed to be able to talk to your kids. I was like, it's, you know, I was like, she got a baby bottle. And Paris like stop. I was like, I think she's got a baby bottle back there. It's like, don't don't baby him, don't right. baby him. Well, tough love again. Okay, here's another one. Getting coaching or professional instruction. Right. Which we kind of talked a little bit about before, and it kind of goes with the networking a little bit as well, too. But you're going to need some help is the point. You got you can't do it on your own. And even if, our, if you are, let's just say, I mean, we're using tennis because that's kind of where we came from. If you're a tennis player as the parent, probably get some help from another coach as well, too, because sometimes the kid's not going to connect the same way they do with you as they will with somebody else. I'm not saying you can't do that, because right. one of the things that one of her coaches told me is, like, you need to be on the court with her more than anybody, because we had hitting coach, we had strength and conditioning coach, you had the technique coach, all this stuff, and he said, you're the one that needs to be out there more than anybody. I was like, well, because I, it was emotional support. What am I paying all these guys for? Right. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> but you also had to take private tennis lessons so that you could go and travel with her 
on the tour and so that you can hit with her. But you took the time to actually craft your skill so that she could get better at what she was doing. That's a good one. You just made me think of something else not on the list. Parental, uh, what's the word that I want? Um, commitment. Right. You're going to have to be committed. And you're going to probably have to do some things that are, are a little uncomfortable for you. I didn't know how to play tennis. Right. I had to learn, right. you know. So be committed to doing some things that could potentially be uncomfortable for you to support the dream. That's so good. Did you hear that? I didn't write that down. Be anything, committed so to helping I'll have to, I'll have to play that support over the so child in their that, career. So. It's great. It's great advice. Okay. Here is another one because we're – Wrapping up time, I'm gonna try to get these done. I promise I'm gonna get to do them. Social media. You're gonna have to do social media. You're gonna have to, to, my, right. to my, brand the child's gift. It's just something <laughs> you gotta do now. It's like, right. you know, I think, really? Social media is like, because I'm not like, personally, I don't do social media. I don't do that. I mean, we have it for a business, we have it for a ministry. Obviously, this is based around social media. You know, so I've always been like, oh, I don't wanna like, People know in my business, and I don't want this, and I don't want to get sucked into that and do that. It's like in today's world, you got to do it. You got to do it. You know, so even for. Like, but it has to be monitored. It can't be unmonitored absolutely. and it can't be unchecked. There are parental controls, which are really important. And the brand has to be um, professional. It can't be, you know, triple X, whatever. Well, and that's, I think you're talking about like the kid having social media. I'm talking about using social media to Advance brand, career, to brand yeah. the child. Right. So there's two different aspects of that. That one, yes, we need to control it over here as a parent, but the other thing is it needs to be done over here. And so once again, you might need some help in doing that. Like, But they also have to maintain that brand. For example, yeah, they're putting this brand out. It's a professional brand and they want to go Lucy Booty in the hot club tonight and that does not support their brand, you have to, again, remind them who they are. You're this champion over here. You're not Triple X Barnyard trying to freaking go. I used to do that. Go, I know, I, I was in the same era. And, and if like, I had social I, media, said that, my I would be in big trouble. Going back like 30, 40 years yeah. ago, I was like, <laughs> Rump shaking, yeah, in the back, in the corner. Yeah, hoo, hoo. Okay. Thank God I've been delivered, huh? Oh, my God. Thank God that person is dead. <laughs> okay, next subject here. <laughs> Monitor your children's social media. It's really important. And use it to brand. And use it to brand. But uphold, make sure they're upholding their brand in the most professional way and continue to remind them who they are in that professional brand. And don't stop, but support it. And make sure if they get sideways... Go back to number one, pray. Yes, ma'am. Number nine, educate, etiquette, and culture. That's good. So, and that's that's like, I mean, we talked about already the kid last night that was like screaming and crying and whining and whatever. It's like, shouldn't be going on in a public place. The kids should be taught that that's not okay. And I remember hearing this lady say something, use your inside voice, not last night, but the time before, <laughs> you know? And last time we were traveling, we were, Oh, as those kids at the hotel, we were in like the concierge level room or whatever. Right. And there those kids are like throwing Rice Krispie bomb. <laughs> we walked in. I was like, so there's a Rice Krispie bomb went off in here. There was stuff everywhere. And it these kids are so loud. Totally out of control. And I just wanted to go, use your inside voice. Because they're like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like, okay, you got to teach the your. The parent has to control. You got to teach yeah. your kids how to have some etiquette. Yeah, all these things. Teach them how to use a fork and a knife. I mean, I remember with Paris, we actually hired a lady to come to our house to teach you how to put a napkin and how how you hold your fork and how to hold your knife and how to do all this stuff. And you say, you know, going back to before, it's like, well, maybe you don't have the resources to hire somebody to come and do that. But go on. I'm sure there's somebody, if you put there's it on so YouTube, on, yeah. there's probably a lady to teach you how to do all that stuff exactly. right at the home. Okay, For free. let's sit down and we're going to learn how to Just like eat. Just it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so there's different types of things that you can learn from a, a culture experience, right. from having manners. And every having... culture is different. And so you have to understand what you're getting into before you go there. So for example, like if you're around the queen and you're in the queen's quarters and you have been invited, you can't go home or go anywhere until she leaves. So you have to stay there for as long as she stays there. You can't just, what do, you, what do we call it? 
when you disappear and you know, Irish goodbye. The Irish goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like you don't take say off. <laughs> <laughs> like where'd that dude go, man? He's like, oh, Irish goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's not proper etiquette. Uh, and every culture is different. You know, like putting your elbows on the table or, you know, cramming food in your mouth or not waiting for someone else to start or, you know, there's just different kinds of roles. This should just be like, not just how to raise a champ. This should be like basics on how to raise a kid. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> seriously. Right. You know, these are like some of the common things that just respecting other people and the social environment. That's the key, just respecting other people in a social environment. A. <laughs> All right, last one. All right. Financial responsibilities. Here we go. We've, we've already talked about that right. to a certain extent, so I don't want to get into like the parents' role on that, but teaching the kids those things as well too. So right. it's, I mean, you already started off, right? We've got Money, Mike, and the Gang, our books that help you as a parent to be able to teach these kids all of those elements. There are tools out there, whether or not you use our books or somebody else's books, you're gonna have to teach them about some money because if they're gonna be a champion in whatever it is that they're gonna be, playing the piano, playing the flute, being an accountant, being a mathematician, being a lawyer, being an attorney, being a professional, whatever it is, they're probably gonna have some financial advancement with that as well too. Right. And they still need to just know how to handle, I think one of the most important things that we can teach kids in the school systems, which is overlooked to a certain degree, is how to handle your money, man. Right. How to create a budget, how to do it's part whatever, of the wheel, part of the wheelhouse. It is, is that so that they don't end up in financial trouble like we ended up, mm -hmm. but also to to advance and increase, like the Bible says that we should increase more and more, we and our children. Right. So that's part of God's plan is for increase. So if increase is gonna come, you have to know how to handle it. Right. And even from the perspective of that you deal with it in a way that you do not what the Bible talks about being high minded. Mm -hmm. Like when Paul went back and was talking to the church about it, he's like, hey, you guys got money. He's like, don't be like high minded. Like don't be high on yourself about that. He was teaching them how to handle their money, yeah. which means they had money right. to deal with. So we need to teach kids on how to earn it, how to manage it, how to give it, how to save it, how to invest it, and how to not be egotistical. About how to it. love people with it. How yeah. to love people with their resources. I would say that, you know, money is a tool to, to love on people. We don't use people to get money. We use money to love people. That's good. I would think that in overall, in wrapping up all the different ways you can raise a champion is to create a safe environment. You have to create a safe environment in the home in order for that child to thrive and to be comfortable enough to express and explore their talents. Yeah. That they're not afraid to be something you're not. Yeah. You know, you have to create that safe space. And it starts at the home because that spills over into other areas in their life. So the parents really have to be parents. Well, and everything that's going on in society today and in our school systems right. and what they're trying to do to try to take away the parents' power to even have something to say about what their kids think or they do, that if you are establishing a strong enough foundation in your kids at home, when somebody else tells them something else that doesn't line up with what you're telling them, it's going to be like an alarm going off right. in a minute, regardless of how old they are, right. you know, and especially may, in the school system. And, and it may take a little bit. It may take, hey, you know, mommy, you know, they talked about this today and you told me something different, you know, and then that's something you can jump on right away. But if you never have said anything, if you've never put that foundation into place right. and it's like. The school's putting the foundation. The society is putting the foundation. Right. Social media is putting this foundation. Somebody's going to put a foundation in the way that your kids think. And my point is this, is that be the parent, be responsible, do your job, do what you need to do to establish a strong foundation. No matter what it is that your child is going to be in life, put the time and the effort into doing it because it's your responsibility. And if you don't, somebody else is going to do it. And most of the time, if somebody else is going to do it, it's not going to be a desirable goal. And if you're not, wear a condom because, you know, <laughs> we're just going to, it's a bad Here way to go. close. But <laughs> honestly, if you can't be a parent that's strong in your beliefs and can uh, raise champions in this life, just cover it up. Put it, stick it in the bag, man. <laughs> That was an interesting <laughs> ending if that's how you want to do it. Be so, responsible. So. Play responsibly. Raise stick responsibly. In, stick in the bag, dude. <laughs>
<laughs> and remember. And with that, <laughs> we are talking about the creating a safe space in and the abundant life. Raising champions. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we want to know what you think about the best way to raise a champion. That would be some interesting comments, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You can follow us at Todd Worldwide, Todd underscore Worldwide. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're ToddWorldwide.com. We're MoneyMikeAndTheGang.com. You can go to Amazon Everywhere. and type in money is easy, saving is easy, giving is easy, say no to debt. It's all Holy there. Toledo. I know. We got, we've... Spotify and any podcasting platform you like. We air Saturdays at 10 a.m. So. so you got no excuse for your kids not to be champions. And right. If you don't believe in it, then I don't know. Go watch Netflix or something else, I guess. Oh, my God. Just watch <laughs> We show. gave you a lot of stuff. <laughs> Until then. Peace. Peace.